Just look at this giant. Imagine for a moment how you go to work in the morning and these giant creatures are flying down the street above the cars. The dragonfly monster, the queen of the skies, flies up to your pet and grabs it with its tenacious claws as prey. Incredible. What would happen if the Meganers didn't die out and continued to live today? Could we exist among the most gigantic insects of all time? In this video, you will learn about prehistoric giants, the size of which scientists still cannot believe in their possible existence. I will tell you all about these monsters, and in the end I will show you what would happen if Meganers lived in our time. What is Meganura? Paleozoic Era Carboniferous Period 400 million years ago The Carboniferous Period lasted 74 million years, from 350 million to 286 million, according to isotopic chronology. In the conditions of the eternal summer of the humid tropics, the trunks of fallen trees quickly rotted. As a result, huge deposits of peat and coal accumulated over millions of years. The largest coal basins in the world, Donetsk in the Ukraine, Tunguska in Russia, and Appalachia in the USA, and many others were formed at this time. The fauna of the Carboniferous period is the realm of insects, spiders, scorpions, and amphibians that lived among the vast swamps and dense forests. Among the first one can just note giant dragonflies, Meganura, flying cockroaches, as well as Anthropleura, relatives of centipedes. Scientists were shocked and baffled when they discovered the remains of the Meganurus fossils at the end of the 19th century. According to modern concepts, the existence of insects of this size is simply impossible. But is it really so? The peculiarity of the respiratory system of insects is as follows. Oxygen is supplied to the tissues in a passive way, using the tracheal system. This imposes very severe restrictions on the possible size of an individual. Why did giant insects still exist in the Paleozoic? The main hypothesis for today is that a higher oxygen content in the atmosphere of the Carboniferous period, which reached 35 to 50 percent in contrast to the current 21 percent. The land was completely covered at that time by forests, which produce oxygen in abundance, and carbon dioxide was consumed for the growth of plants. How was it bliss then? Breathing. That's when there was heaven on earth, but that's not accurate. In this case, the sizes of insects become much, much larger. The climate of the Carboniferous period was very diverse. In the equatorial latitudes, it was warm and humid all year round. In tropical latitudes, it was hot and dry. In temperate latitudes, it was cool with a uniform distribution of precipitation throughout the year. At the end of the period, regions with a nivial climate appear inside the polar circles of the Earth the era of the Carboniferous Permian glacification begins. For the first time, the fossil remains of the Meganeura were discovered in 1880 in Commentry in France. Another well-preserved Meganeura was found in the English county of Derbyshire in 1979. Meganeura is the largest dragonfly of the rocker family. The wingspan of the wings of the Meganeura reached 71 centimeters, and the length of the body was already 75 centimeters. A feature of the Meganeura was the wings reinforced with additional veins and arcs. This allowed not only to increase the size of the wing, but also to increase its area and lift without the risk of major damage. It is not surprising that these dragonflies were predators and ate their own kind, other insects, Dictonuras. By the way, also not small. But Meganers won't be the only giant anthropods of the Carboniferous period. In the forest of that time, the mygalomorph spiders of monstrous size with a body half a meter in size and huge predatory cockroaches and mind-blowing centipede monsters. For example, the famous two-meter Anthopleura. How would you feel if you were next to such a centipede? Run, bitch! Run! If everything is correctly calculated, all these animals would not be purely herbivores and most likely ate each other. In general, anthropods eat everything that only size allows. A modern giant centipede can happily eat a bird, a frog, a lizard, and now imagine, a centipede the size of a car, and wonder what they eat. But where exactly did these monsters live? Meganers lived in damp fern and club moss jungles, preferring wetlands. There are still different opinions on the habitat of the larvae. 
Some scientists suggest that the larvae led a terrestrial lifestyle, others that it is aqua, the size of the insect combined with the higher level of oxygen in the atmosphere of the carbon period. Meganuri and their larvae reached giant sizes. Therefore, despite the fact that the main diet of the dragonflies was small insects, often meganers did not disdain from small fish and amphibians. Modern insects cannot boast of large sizes, and the word insect itself and its derivatives are synonymous with something small and defenseless. But this was far from always the case, because in past geological epochs, such huge insects lived on the planet that it is difficult to even imagine them. But what if the meganura were alive now? Insect muscles are much stronger and faster than quadrupedal or fish muscles. If a person had the same muscles as an ant, he could run at the speed of 60 kilometers an hour and lift a Dodge Ram weighing two tons with his own hands. But you have to pay for everything in this world, in particular for the work of such powerful muscles. A huge amount of fuel, that is, food is required. In a day, a herbivorous insect eats as much vegetation as it weighs itself. Predatory dragonflies eat about 30% of their own weight per day. Now imagine, such a dragonfly lays 250 to 300 eggs. This means that in order to feed at least a month, the offspring of one such dragonfly will need at least a herd of cows. What? Just imagine, be so kind as to give me a portion of a herd of cows, but juicier. Indeed, in the Carboniferous period, there were no birds, no insectivorous mammals, no toads. There was no one to eat dragonflies and limit their numbers. Fast forward to a modern metropolis. Now, atmospheric air at the Earth's surface normally consists of 78.9% nitrogen and 20.95 to 24% oxygen. In the Carboniferous period, the percentage of oxygen content was 34%. The air we breathe is polluted by 280 toxic compounds. These are salts of heavy metals, oxides of nitrogen, and carbon, ammonia, sulfur dioxide, and others. In calm weather, all these harmful compounds settle and create a dense layer near the ground, smog. Under the influence of ultraviolet rays during a hot period, harmful gas mixtures are converted into more harmful substance, photooxidants. That is, the current toxic gases would force the meganura to mutate or simply kill it. What the fu as well as the critically low percentage of oxygen. Meganers would simply suffocate in our atmosphere. Let's find the most highly saturated places with oxygen in the current era. These are places close to oceans with cold currents, where there is tropical vegetation nearby. This is the western part of Africa, the western part of South America, and the southern part of Australia. Yes, the inhabitants of these continents would be less fortunate if the Meganuri live now, especially for farmers. But what if everywhere on Earth now, the concentration of oxygen reached 35% and above? During the Carboniferous period, fire was more common because the higher concentrations of oxygen made it easier to start fires. There are wildfires in California that recently took weeks to put out. You can be sure that even a modest increase in O2 concentration would lead to more forest fires and they would burn even more areas. And no lighters or matches. At 50% O2, the match will essentially explode when you strike it. Oh yes, we will die young due to the destruction of our sensitive linings of our lungs by oxygen due to slow burning. Who knows, maybe even spontaneous human combustion would be possible if O2 was high enough. Plants will grow more slowly and less vigorously. A reduction in the production of our food web producers on land would reverberate throughout all life on land and lead to widespread loss of life. Ultimately, rebalancing the food web would leave human history behind. What if it weren't for the oxygen conditions? If the larvae of the Meganur were nimble and efficient hunters according to modern ideas, then the adults were much slower and had much less maneuverability compared to modern dragonflies and insects. The giant Meganuras were slow, which means they were not difficult to catch even for the most clumsy people in the world. The structure of the wings also indicates the lesser perfection of the flight of the giant dragonflies compared to modern ones. Their wings did not have a thickening at the leading edge of the wing, which nevertheless significantly improved aerodynamics. And the narrow and long shape of the wings, with the sharp tops and wide bases, gives out in their owners the ability to gliding rather than to aerial acrobatics. And to this, the mass and accompanying inertia. And it turns out that it will not be difficult for smaller and more maneuverable brethren to dodge such a bomber in the air. For the sake of fun, the fattest and clumsiest person on earth could replenish his entomological collection. But what sizes should collection showcases be for this? Not every resident of the metropolis could afford this. Would they be able to soak in our time? 
In our age, dragonflies often become easy prey for anthropod creatures. But then they kept these individuals in terrible fear, often choosing them as the main dish for lunch. If they live now, they would not mind eating frog legs or say shrimp with you in the restaurant. Only such portions as a person would need. Maganers needed 50 times more. The massive transfer of nutrients from the ocean to the land has ended, the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere has decreased, and clumsy amphibians evolved into reptiles, fast, active, protected by strong scales. Giant centipedes, insects, and spiders had nothing to breathe. Even worse, they had nothing to eat, and the unique bio-communities of the Carboniferous period with insects as top predators disappeared forever. Despite the fact that modern insects have greatly decreased in size, and the largest of them easily fit in the palm of a person, representatives of this class can still be called the most prosperous on the planet. To date, more than one million species of insects are known to science. But according to scientists, there are much more of them, from two to six million, and entomologists are simply not able to describe and study them all. How many interesting and amazing mysteries riddles in our flora and fauna? And I'm off to prepare for you a new, no less interesting video for the What Is channel. Your like and subscribe will be the best reward after any study I have worked hard on. If you want to be aware of the most amazing events, subscribe to my Telegram channel and Instagram at the link in the description. Together, we will create the strongest community of science fans.